Hi, this is Denise with Paper Crafty, and today I'm participating in a challenge sponsored by Tanya Bomar, who is with Taddy Treasures and Friends, and this is through her Facebook group. Um, I will provide a link to that Facebook group down below and um, the challenge. Uh, and in this challenge, we're using a whole book up. Um, Tanya recommended using a reader di Reader's Digest type book. Um, and I have a number of these uh, books. Um, and, you know, I, I was just kind of going through and seeing, you know, what I wanted to use, which, which book I wanted to use. Um, this is one of the Reader's Digest condensed books. This has some really gorgeous um, pages in it. And I like the yellowing in it. And this one's a 1984 uh, book. Let's see there, you can see the pictures in there. This other one that I have, I really love this one too. This is actually an older book. Um, this is Best Love Books for Young Readers, volume four. This is 1966 uh, book, but you know, the, ironically, the pages are in better condition. Um, and, you know, I really love both books, um, but I'm thinking that I might want to use these kind of more aged pages um, just to give, you know, some different, um, that kind of a, a vibe to it. Now, my only concern about these pages is that, um, you know, they don't crack when you fold them. So I just wanted to kind of test that out. And it actually looks like, even though they're yellowed, um, they are still pretty strong. So I think I'm gonna go with this book. And I'm just gonna share with you how I go ahead and remove these. Uh, pages. I, I'm just going to use a little um, straight edge. This I think I got this one from Daiso. It's just a little little kitty cat. Um, and I'm just going to open it up like this. And I find this is the easiest way to kind of get pages out of a book is just to kind of go down. And this way it doesn't ruin the cover and it doesn't ruin um, the pages. And you can now see, see where that binding is right there. So I'm just gonna go again. Just down like that. And now I have the cover without any um, papers in it. And I have a whole slew of inner pages. And this has a lot. Let's see, 574, okay? So now I'm gonna just take um, 16 pages out of here and um, we're gonna make something with those. Okay, I'm going to keep these because I kind of like that paper there. Let's see. This is all glued. None of this is in signatures, so... Um, I'm going to have to basically tear the pages out. And they tear fairly easily. Okay, so I have six, I've pulled 16 pages out of the book and I'm not worried about, you know, I'm not gonna worry about what order they are in. They're, these are kind of near the, the front, um, but I'm not too concerned about that. I separated out the ones that have pictures because uh, I wanna do something different with those. So I have four pages that have pictures. What I want to do with the pictures is I'm going to make uh, page inserts for a um, for a journal, and I'm going to do that uh, by just adding a little bit of 
some seam binding along the um, the between the two edges. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do the seam binding on the side opposite um, the pages. So right here on this side, and I'm just adding a little bit of the um, art glitter glue because it makes a nice kind of fine line. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of leave a little teeny bit of a gap between the two of those. Try to kind of, you can see I'm kind of lining it up on this line here on my mat so I can kind of get them, you know, more or less even. And then I'm just simply laying this over the top. And then I'm just gonna push that down, burnish it a little bit. Now, if you don't have seam binding, no big deal. You know, use whatever, um, you know, if you have fabric, it can be colored fabric, it can be plain fabric. If you don't have fabric, you can use a little strip of paper. Um, I personally like fabric just because it's um, really uh, sturdy. Right, I'm just going to cut that like that. And cut this the bottom. Okay, I'm going to put that to the side for the moment. And then I'm going to get where are my other two pages. Oh. And so these are the other two pages that I'm going to use. I love the color of this. It's so pretty. All right, so I'm just going to again turn this over. Like that. Okay. All right. I really like um Okay. So I'm just going to do something very um simple on this side. I'm just going to take a little bit of washi kind of cover this up a little bit since both of these edges are a little bit on the rough side. There we go. And if you have older washi, you may need to um, add a little bit of glue down to it. I'm not doing that right this second. I think it'll be okay and I can always add it um, if it seems like it's pulling up you know, later when I go to put it into a, a book. Okay. So that's cute. I really like that. And then I'll be able to, once this dries, I'll be able to fold that and put it into the, um, just fold it like this and put it into a uh, signature. This is pretty plain on both sides, so I'm not going to do anything more to this one. I think that one looks good. Uh, this one, um, I think this one uh, looks okay on this side. I don't think this one's going to be a problem. However, it's got this um, text here, which is not super, um, you know, useful when you're trying to do some journaling uh, on a page. So I'm going to add a little bit of gesso on top of that. Okay, so I really like golden gesso. I think it's super duper smooth, so I really love that. And I like to tint it a little bit. And I use a little teeny bit of this heavy body translucent burnt umber Liquitex um, and some of this heavy body yellow light Hansa um, in there. So instead of it being just 
you know, white like that, which would be pretty stark against this. I mean, not awful. Um, you know, it still could be kind of fun. Um, it's more of a tinted color, more of a book color. So, you know, this is what regular gesso looks like. And then this is the color when it's tinted. And I like doing this um, just to kind of give a smooth uh, fin finish on the um, on these pages so that they're, you know, easy to easy to write on. And then I just use a little card to kind of smooth it on. So I just take a little bit um, with a palette knife and you can just, you don't need a palette knife. You could just use, um, you know, this card if you wanted. And then I just kind of smooth it out. So it's just really, um, oops, a very light coating. I might do a couple layers. And again, I'm, you know, I'm not looking for perfection here. I'm just looking to kind of lighten up the, um, the text so that, uh, you know, you can journal on top of it, but it still adds a little bit of texture on there so I I really like that okay so let's see what's the next thing I'm gonna make I think with this I want to take these and I want to make envelopes so let's see I'm gonna figure out what size I want them to be let's see Maybe like right there, and then the top is going to go over the edge like that. This one, you know, and these all can be very different sizes and whatnot. It's not the biggest, you know, it's not... Uh, rocket science or anything okay so I don't want this um, angle to go beyond you know to go above like above here because then you're gonna see where that ends so I want it to be angled down below so if you can see so I've got this paper right here I'm gonna angle it like that up to this point right yeah okay I'm just folding it in half so that they both look even. And then I'm just... Okay, there you go. And all I'm going to do is, if my glue cooperates, take a little line of glue on either side here. And then just uh, you know, burnish that down. And you've got this cute little envelope. And these envelopes are just super handy. I use these all the time. I decorate them up and just use a little, um, you know, do a little bit of um, uh, collaging on them and stuff. And they just look so cute. I, I usually put, um, get a 
when I uh, uh, sell something in my Etsy shop, I'll, I'll use one of these to add little extras in, you know, like um, little die cuts or different things like that. So yeah, but they're just really, they're just a lot of fun. I like, I like them. They, and they turn out super cute. And I've got four cute little envelopes, which I'm going to collage up at some point to match my project or add, you know, little die cuts or whatever. But these are just kind of the bases for that. So super fun. Okay, so now I'm going to um, make some... Uh, some pages. I took out some of these that have some interesting um, fonts in them, just because I like that. And I'm going to uh, run them through my Sizzix with this really beautiful um, floral, uh, with this really beautiful embossing folder from Anna Griffin. Um, this was a uh, Cricut cuddle bug, so it's pretty old. I don't, I'm not sure if you can find this particular one anymore, but there's lots of, you know, similar um, styles. Now you could very easily just take and put all four of these sheets um, inside uh, the embossing folder and just run it through really quickly if you're, if you're kind of in a hurry. Um, but I wanted to do something a little bit different and um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this this front part, which is the part that has the, you know, the inner, um, where the flowers go in, so it's the top, and I'm just gonna run some um, Distress Oxide. In this case, I'm using Stormy Sky. And I'm just gonna run it over the um, embossing pad, kinda like this. Oops. just like that okay and then I'm going to take the paper that I want to use so in this case I'm using this one and I'm going to um, mist it with my little misty sprayer on the back and you could do it on the front too it doesn't you know but you just need one side um, but I like it on the back because I don't want to activate that uh, ink uh, on the um, on the front okay so then I take that um, I put it in my sandwich with the base and the um, cutting pad my sandwich and then um, the top cut cutting pad and I'm just gonna run it through my big shot and I'm gonna do it a few times I'm not letting it go all the way through go back this really beautiful kind of um, embossed almost a wallpaper look if you can see that let's see but with the the um, goodness I can't get it centered on the um, on the uh, paper so I really love the way that looks all right so I'm gonna do two more of those Okay, so there's lots of stuff that you can do with these. Um, you know, you can just tear pieces, you know, make little clusters, do collage, things like that. Um, with these, I'm just gonna do something super simple. So um, I'm just gonna take, I'm simply gonna take them and fold them in half. bend them too much but I can take and put that then if say this is a page in my journal um, you know I can glue it here and glue it here and have a pocket here open it up have a pocket here or you know glue it in like that into a signature have a pocket here have a pocket here so, you know, lots of different ways to use this, but I'm just gonna make this super simple and just um, 
fold these in half uh, for my current purposes. You know, and then you can um, do more decoration or or whatever. And you can use any uh, embossing folder. You can use any color um, distress ink or ink in general. I really like the distressed oxide particularly because they uh, really give nice um, coverage for the background. All right, so I'm just simply taking these and folding these in half, and those I'll just keep in my stash like that. Okay, and then the last thing that I'm going to make um, is gonna be some hidden paper clip bases. And I have a whole nother video um, where I show how to make these. Um, so I'll link that down below if you want to see different ideas on decorating them and things like this. I'm just simply going to make uh, the bases for the uh, hidden paper clips right now. So just super, super simple. Just taking some very inexpensive paper clips. These are from Daiso. Um, on the, so it's like a Japanese dollar store. And I'm taking these paper clips and I'm just putting them over the folded edge of these of this paper. So I have two videos that I will link down below um, that explain how a paper hidden paper clip works and also you know how you can go about decorating them um, to use in your projects. Okay, but this is just going to be kind of the base, and these don't have to be evenly spaced. Um, if you want some bigger hidden paper clips and some smaller ones. I'm just gonna put four on these because it's kind of feels to me about right. Um, for the length that I want to do. Okay, I put that all the way down in there. Okay, so this is just a liquid Liquitex matte medium. So it's not a collage medium, sorry. It's a matte medium, Liquitex matte medium. And I just put it into this bottle because it's much easier to control than uh, this, you know, tip like that, I think. And this is pretty pricey, but you can get it with a coupon um, at, at Michael's or other stores, and it lasts forever. I mean, this stuff lasts a really long time. Since I'm doing a lot of gluing and stuff, I'm just going to put my Tim Holtz little media mat down. It'll just make my life a little easier so I don't have to clean up so much um, glue off of my work surface. All right, so I'm just kind of um, covering this whole thing with just regular glue stick. And then I'm gonna take one of these and I'm gonna put some matte medium just around the paper clip. And that just makes it, um, you know, a little stronger. I really like having these in my stash. All right, so then I'm just gonna take that and I'm going to burnish that down, okay. And then on this side, I'm just gonna add a little bit more. Glue stick. And then a little bit more matte medium. Okay. 
and these come together really quickly these bases so you can make you can you know pop out a whole bunch of these and just have them ready in your stash and then you know when you're ready to um, for a hidden paper clip you just um, you know cut one off like right here and then you can decorate that section so this hidden paper clip is like that I need to let that dry but um, hopefully you'll get the idea uh, like I said I will also include uh, a video down below that has a lot more information about how these hidden paper clips work and um, you know how you can mass make them um, just these are fabulous to have on hand oh that came out a little bit faster than I wanted okay So I'm just going to put that in there like that. side here again just cover the whole thing with glue stick up a little bit of the paint that's on here um, on my media mat but it's not a huge deal okay so I'm just gonna let those dry and then I'll show you how those work okay so that quickly I have one two three four five six seven eight because those are where the paper clips are eight hid hidden paper clips um, and I'm just going to show you, let's see, we'll cut this one off so I can feel where the two are. So I'm kind of, kind of just cut between them when I want, you know, I'll just store them like this. And when I need to find a, a use a hidden paper clip. So for example, let's say I want to attach this to that. This isn't fully dry, but you kind of get the idea. See, this is a hidden paper clip. You can't see the paper clip anywhere, right? And then I can take and I can decorate this. You know, I can add, um, you know, little embellishments. I can add, um, you know, do collage, you know, all sorts of different stuff on here, um, you know, to kind of make this, this pretty. Um, and, uh, you know, you can cut it shorter if you want. It doesn't have to be this long. You know, you could cut it, cut the off, cut it off like that. You can make it narrower, um, however you want. But it's just a base for a hidden paper clip. So super handy. So now I've got eight of those. I've got eight hidden paper clips made out of uh, four book pages. Okay, and I'm just going to keep the bases like that. And that one's ready to go. Like I said, I'll put the video links for how I decorate these um, uh, and how they, they work because a lot of people are confused about how hidden paper clips work. I'll put both of those videos in the link below. I've got four of these little um, over the page pockets like that you know and you don't have to emboss these um, to make the over the page pockets you could just use you know just fold them in half 
Um, but this way I, you know, if I decide, I, I didn't really fold them, you know, um, uh, burnish them a lot. If I decide that I want to use them more for like, you know, collage or just even just page decoration, I could do that. So that's kind of fun too. Okay, so I've got four of those. So that's fun. I've got four little envelopes. Four little envelopes with some cute backs already. And you know, those can be collaged up, embellished further. And then I've got two um, book pages. So this will just go into a signature like that. Okay, so that's one book page. And here's a second book page. And I showed you how I um, just gesso the interior um, lightly uh, so that um, you can uh, journal over that. And it just adds like a little texture, but you know, it's nothing um, super obvious. So, okay, so I have two book pages and if you want to more closely, you know, match the color of the pages that you're working with, you know, you can do that by, you know, adjusting the tint um, and experimenting a little bit with, with, the, um, with the colors that you add into uh, the gesso, the white gesso. So for this, for example, in this one, I could have made it a little more brown um, and that would have, you know, probably blended in a little bit better with this particular paper, but I'm happy with it as it is. I think it'll be great in a journal. So I'm super happy. I've got two really cool um, page inserts. I've got four envelopes. I've got eight hidden paper clips and four um, over the page, uh, uh, tuck spots. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you found this, um, useful and inspiring and gave you some ideas on, um, ways to, uh, use up a whole book, <laughs> uh, and um, the innards and, and uh, create some really cool embellishments to keep in your stash. Um, if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment in the description box below. And uh, if you feel inclined, uh, please subscribe to my channel. I'd love to have you uh, regularly if you would like to see more videos like this. Again, this is Denise with Paper Crafty and Craft On.